everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of It's News to Me. I'm your host, Laurie Melbourne. This week, we will be highlighting important events happening right here in our community. The most exciting auction in Batavia is coming up. Get your pick of the litter at the Bulldogs Unleashed live auction. In a statement released from Britta McKenna, Bulldogs Unleashed marketing director, the summer display of the artistic Bulldogs Unleashed in downtown Batavia is coming to a close. However, not without fanfare. A live auction of 15 of the big dogs will be held on September 15, 2018 at Shannon Hall, 14 North Van Buren Street, Batavia. If you've driven through Batavia, you've surely seen the 30-inch tall fiberglass dogs, all painted by local artists and seal coated by Batavia-based Boyce Body Works, Inc. They are ready for year-round outdoor or indoor display at your home or business. Tickets and photos of the 15 dogs for the live auction and final Bulldogs Unleashed project celebration are available at the official website, bulldogsunleashed.org. The $65 ticket price includes open bar, live entertainment, and locally catered food and desserts. All proceeds from the event will be donated to three local charity partners. Batavia Foundation for Educational Excellence, Batavia Parks Foundation, and the Batavia Public Library Foundation. Doors are open at 6 p.m. for previewing. Food and beverages will be served and the auction will start at 8 p.m. You can find the dogs around town or online prior to the auction or pick up a printed map at the dogs locations at City Hall and various other places. In addition, 10 17-inch tabletop foster dogs are also on display and are up for raffle prizes. All 10 tabletop dogs will be raffled at the September 15th auction event. You do not need to be present to win. Grab a passport at any of the 10 locations and get them all stamped and enter a free raffle to win a Bulldogs basket. Now get ready for a hot, hot, hot weekend. Chili aficionados know to arrive early to sample the widest array of chili, contending for top honors in the Illinois State Championship Chili Cook-Off, returning July 28th to the Batavia Riverwalk, and adding a fire hose challenge and watermelon eating contest to the expanded afternoon lineup. People can enter one of two chili contests right up to the morning of the event. The contest, sanctioned by CASI, or Chili Appreciation Society International, has prescribed rules such as no beans or filler in the recipe. The second contest invites traditional chili recipes with no ingredient restrictions. Sampling begins at 2 p.m., quantities are limited. People are encouraged to donate $5 for a spoon for the sampling cups. Last year, the event founders Bill Pearson and his wife Cheryl won first and second place at the state championships, respectively, Pearson said. What, the, what is the Pearson's secret to prize-winning chili? He said it boils down to technique and luck. We have a saying in chili, you can cook my recipe, but you can't cook my chili, Bill Pearson said. Every cook does certain things a little bit different. The winner of the Kasi State Championship qualifies for the International Contest in Terralinga, Texas. The winners of the Traditional cont Category Contest will receive cash prizes, said Katie Drum, Director of Marketing and Public Relations with the Batavia Park District, which has helped coordinate the cook-off with the Batavia Chamber of Commerce for about four years. Now, let's go to the park bench with Sharon Bringelson. Hello, I'm Denise Cartina, Marketing Intern for the Batavia Park District, and welcome to the Park Bench. I'm here today bringing you Park District news at the Batavia Depot Museum. While summer may be winding down, we want to make sure you're up to date on all the latest Park District events and activities. Our final two River Rhapsody concerts are coming up in August. On August 1st, Shindig will take the stage to perform music from the 60s and will feature songs by the Beatles, the Beach Boys, and the Monkees. On August 8th, Join us as we listen to current, upbeat country, as well as some pop and rock songs from the female-fronted band Wild Daisy. 
Concerts are free and begin at 7 p.m. at the Batavia Riverwalk. Visit www.bataviaparks.org for more information on these awesome concerts. Make sure to come, out, come on out to sing and dance with us. After the August 1st concert, stick around to enjoy a movie under the stars. Our final summer outdoor movie at the Batavia Riverwalk will bring Ghostbusters to the big screen. The movie is free and begins at 8.30 p.m. Grab your blankets, pillows, and snacks and join us for this fun movie night. It's time to gather up your friends, family, or team members and help spruce up our local parks for our park cleanup day on August 4th from 8 a.m. to noon. All tools are provided, just bring your own gloves. Water and snacks will also be provided. If interested, RSVP by emailing katyd at bataviaparks.org at least one week prior to the cleanup day. Our final Cory special event of the summer is approaching. So Long Summer and Swim will take place on August 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. Say farewell to summer 2018 and cook off the last weekend of Cory season with extended hours, fun family games, and more. This will be a weekend at the Cory that you will not want to miss. The Cory will be open until August 12th, so take a day to cool off from the summer heat by swimming, playing in the sand, or diving off the diving platforms while it's still open. Registration for the 2018 to 2019 New Horizons Preschool is still open. New Horizons Preschool provides an opportunity for social and emotional growth as well as an entryway to a more formal school experience. Due to the low teacher slash student ratio, the number of students enrolled is limited. Parents must register their own children. Please call ahead at 630-406-5282 to check for class availability. How much do you know about Batavia? To learn more about Batavia's rich history, stop by the Batavia Depot Museum. The museum's summer exhibit, History of Batavia Churches, is on display until November 18th. The museum is open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from noon to 4 p.m. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you soon at all these fun activities and events. We'll see you next time for the Park Bench. It's time for Batavia Around the Block and Business Nuggets, brought to you by Neighbors Magazine. The Downtown St. Charles Partnership is excited to announce that the 7th Annual St. Charles Jazz Weekend is hosting free live jazz music on September 6th through 9th throughout Downtown St. Charles. There are 27 different performances set between 16 different venues for brunch, dinner, and late night entertainment. This year's venues include Rock City Grill, Francesca's by the River, Baker Memorial United Methodist Church, Filling Station Pub and Grill, The House Pub, McNally's Pub, First Street Plaza, Vintage 53, The Wine Exchange, The Finery and Blacksmith Bar, Eden on the River, and The Office St. Charles. The venues will host many performances from jazz soloists, quintets, and more than cover a range of jazz styles to complement for their in-house guests. Three-time Grammy Award-winning saxophonist Frank Catalano will headline at the Filling Station Pub and Grill on Thursday evening and play again at the House Pub on Friday and Saturday evening. For more information, visit stcjazzweekend.com. Goat yoga is a trend sweeping the nation, but generally for a younger crowd. The life enrichment team of Greenfields, known for thinking outside the box, was excited to bring the practice to their residents. Many people think of bingo and birthday parties as typical programs at retirement communities. But at Greenfields, we strive to offer the unexpected, said Emily Abramson, life enrichment coordinator. It was especially fun when the residents are trying out what's trending. The goat yoga event was part of Greenfield's Senior Fitness Recognition Week. In addition to yoga, the week featured water games, essential oils, foot and hand massages, and more. Ellen Bilou of Blue Sky Farm in Sugar Grove brought five goats, including two babies and their moms, to Greenfield's. This is the first time that the farm, which is certified in goat yoga, has taken their goats off site and the first time that they've worked with seniors. Goat yoga was experienced by residents in their 70s all the way up to age 97. The interaction ranged from having a goat balancing on their backs while they were in plank position to simply getting a nice cuddle from a baby and everything in between, said Emily. 
An added fun fact is that one or two of our residents were raised on farms with goats and never dreamed they'd be doing yoga with them 70 plus years later. Yoga has undisputed health benefits and an enthusiastic following at Greenfields. Kristen O'Connor, Senior Fitness Specialist at Greenfields who led Thursday's sessions, acknowledged that there are naysayers about the goat component, but added, this was an absolutely beautiful experience. We were able to enjoy the calm and peace that yoga brings to us and get the added benefits of the animals interacting with us. It brought everyone a lot of joy. It was lighthearted. When we add a joyful element to our exercise, that's likely to keep us exercising. Furthermore, about 20 people who haven't participated in yoga before joined us today. This was a win all the way around. There you have it, goat yoga at Greenfields. Now let's check in with Batavia Library's Patricia Leonard. Hello, I'm Patricia Leonard, Promotional Services Manager at the Batavia Public Library. We hope that you have been enjoying the Summer Reading Club and our theme of Reading Takes You Everywhere. Be sure to return your reading log by August 6th to claim your final reward and get your name in the raffle. Have you seen the latest issue of Neighbors of Batavia magazine? Each issue contains the complete program guide for the library, plus information on how to register for events and classes. Summer is a good time to learn new computer skills or strengthen your present skills. We are holding several one-hour hands-on classes for Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Register through our website at bataviapubliclibrary.org. Bring the babies, tots, and preschoolers to one of our Storytime programs. Stories in Motion for ages 3 to 5 will get everyone up on their feet and shaking their sillies out. Baby Play and Learn is a drop-in playtime. Meet other parents and grandparents while your tots play and interact with each other. This is a free playtime where we provide the toys and materials. Families can celebrate Harry Potter's birthday at Potterpalooza on Tuesday, July 31st. Travel to the world of Harry Potter and join us for games, activities, a craft, and fun. Dress up as your favorite character. Teens and young adults of all abilities and their friends and families are invited to meet new people and try out a board game or a card game at Inclusion Game Night on Wednesday, August 8th. High school volunteers are welcome to join the fun. The Friends of Batavia Public Library are hosting a special Stock Your Classroom sale for educators only on Saturday, August 4th from 9.15 until noon. This sale is open to all school teachers, preschool teachers, daycare workers, and home educators. The regular Friends book sale will take place the next Saturday on August 11th from 9.15 until 4 p.m. Find more information about library programs and events in Neighbors of Batavia magazine or by visiting the online calendar at bataviapubliclibrary.org. I hope to see you at the library this summer. Thank you, Patricia. The City of St. Charles hosted a groundbreaking ceremony to kick off construction of the new police department headquarters. The event was held at the site of the new facility, 1515 West Main Street, formerly the Valley Shopping Center. Opening remarks by Police Chief James Keegan and Mayor Ray Rogina began at 6 p.m., followed by an official groundbreaking and photos at 6.15. Attendees included Police Department staff and officials, members of the St. Charles City Council, and executives and staff of Riley Construction, the construction manager for the project. The 56,000 square foot, two-story police station headquarters will replace the police station's current location in downtown St. Charles. The new station will feature wellness center and training room for police employees, a modern layout with private and communal workspaces, a second floor community room for public use and a squad garage with drive-in bay. St. Charles is looking forward to the new and improved facility to better serve its residents. Geneva Public Library District will also break ground for its new facility at 3 p.m. Friday, July 27th at the site 227 South 7th Street, formerly known as 210 South 6th Street. Uh, the brief ceremony will include a welcome from Library Director Christine Lazarus an overview of the new library project from Library Board President Robert Schiffler, and a community welcome from Geneva Mayor Kevin Burns. 
Refreshments will follow the ceremony and will be served at the current library at 127 James Street. The 57,000 square foot facility will offer community members of all ages and stages of life a library with space for additional technology to learn new skills, expanded collections, more programs, on-site parking, drive-up convenience, and many other resources and services. Additionally, library service will be expanded to include new opportunities for collaborating, using technology, and experimenting in lab spaces. The goal is an opening date in mid-year 2019. Now, let's go over to BPS 101 Learning Curve. Hi, I'm Sue Gillerlane, the Communications Manager at BPS 101. I wanted to let you know about a very special event that is being planned. On Thursday, September 20th, starting at 6 p.m. at the Batavia Fine Arts Center, Batavia Public School District will welcome eight inductees into the 2018 BPS 101 Hall of Honor. The Hall of Honor was initiated by the Batavia Foundation for Educational Excellence and BPS 101 four years ago to promote pride in Batavia Public Schools and to honor Batavia High School alumni, faculty, and friends who have made outstanding accomplishments in the communities and personal lives since they have been associated with BPS 101. This year's eight inductees are Samira Ahmed, who graduated in 1989, Eldon Freidendahl, who graduated in 1956, Matt Holm, who graduated in 1987, Sharon Moran, who graduated in 1960, Mike Spillane, who graduated in 1986, Max Streetle, who graduated in 1954, Sue Bauer, who is a former Batavia High School math, science, and computer science teacher with 29 years of service, and lastly, Ronald Karabowitz, BPS 101 friend and founder of the Fox Valley Robotics, Batavia Robotics um, Organization. The Hall of Honor is open to the entire community and tickets are now available online at bps101.net. Tickets are $15 for an adult and $5 for children. Children five and under are free. This community event will feature beautiful desserts and beverages catered by the Batavia High School Culinary Department and other local restaurants. I hope to see you there. It's gonna be a great evening. Thank you. With thousands of visitors expected to attend the Geneva Arts Fair this weekend, the Geneva Police Department announced a section of South 3rd Street will be closed during the festival. The fair will be held from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, July 28th through 29th in downtown Geneva. To accommodate the event, parking on 3rd Street from James to South Streets will be prohibited after 4 p.m. Friday, July 27th. Starting at 5 p.m., that night, the same stretch of 3rd Street will be closed to traffic in both directions to allow artists to set up their tents. Heed the parking signs as police will be towing. For more information about the Geneva Arts Fair, please call the Geneva Chamber of Commerce at 630-232-6060 or visit genevachamber.com. Every year, for nearly 40 years, the Kavanaugh Gallery at Fine Line Creative Center offers six to seven gallery exhibitions. Located at 37W570 Balkum Road in St. Charles, these exhibitions are a combination of both invitational shows, which is an artist or group of artists that are invited by the Fine Line Gallery Committee to show their work, and juried shows, artists apply to be part of the show. Currently on display is an exhibition entitled In and Around. Featuring jewelry and vessels in both two-dimensional and three-dimensional forms, this is a juried show. Artists' work has come in from Michigan, Virginia, Arizona, Colorado, California, South Carolina, and Illinois to be part of this latest exhibition. If you haven't been to Fine Line, put it on your calendar for a wonderful art experience. More information is available by calling 630-584-9443 or online at fineline.org. That's all we have for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. Most of our programming is viewable online at mybatv.com or on YouTube under the username BATV1017. Be sure to like our Facebook page to stay up to date on the station's current happenings. 
Thanks again for watching. I'm Lori Milborn, and that's news to me.